Okay, uh, 201, please. I need a motion. Motion to enter into executive session at 702 to discuss a matter of particular student to discuss matters made exempt under federal law, the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act, FERPA. Second. Thank you. And uh, any discussion on that? Voting, please. Yes. Yes? Yes. 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 Okay. We are in executive session. We will not be long. Famous last words. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> oh, what? Hello, I'm Mr. Krabs. Hi. Hello. I have had just a great opening to the school at the elementary school. George Ross McKenzie is a great place to be. The kids are wonderful. The staff have been accommodating. This year has just been a great kickoff. We had uh, lots of uh, fanfare. I had purchased some uh, nice uh, flags that said Welcome McKenzie Elementary that we had out in front of the building. They'll be back up again for our open house. And um, just, it's, it's, we're almost staffed. <coughs> I want to let you know we are hiring a, um, a new pre-K teacher, Miranda. She was here with us. I think she stepped out. So on your agenda tonight, you're going to have Miranda. Rebecca Ryman came in as an aide, and we also have Melissa, or excuse me, Melinda Coney. She's here with us. Wave, Melinda. Melinda is going to be an aide also that's going to be with us at the elementary school. So we will be fully staffed after, uh, I think she can start on the 24th. So we've had eight uh, substitutes that have been in the building to cover as best we can to have everybody that is in place. Um, upcoming tomorrow is our International Dot Day. It's about creativity and uh, being um, your inner creative uh, part. So hopefully some teachers are gonna do some activities that relate to our International Dot Day. Uh, the week of the 24th is our spirit week with plenty of activities that are taking place that week with kids in the building. Uh, open house will be the end of the month on that Wednesday, the 26th. So we'll have open house here at 6 p.m. We'll begin here in the um, gymnasium and then proceed out after that. The 27th, that's also part of spirit week. That's a nice dress up, dress for success day. So our school pictures will also take place on dress for success day. So hopefully parents will see uh, good school pictures with kids dressed up nicely on that day. And then October 4th, which is before our next board meeting that's scheduled right now, uh, we'll have our early dismissal drill day. And that will take place both in the junior, senior high school and at McKenzie Elementary. And I'd like to thank our PTA. They brought um, some really nice uh, water containers for the staff, lanyards, some pens. So anybody that's here as part of the PTA, thank you very much for that. And also they are uh, starting, they have about four, four or five events that are scheduled throughout the year. And our first event is upcoming this coming Monday, September 17th. They will have a PTA circus assembly. The circus will come to McKenzie. They'll take place in here with a, um, a school presentation. Then we're breaking out certain grades that will have an opportunity to participate in circus-like acts that they will be uh, provided by the the presenters themselves. So that's what's happening here at McKenzie Elementary. And do I have any questions or anything like that from the board? Any questions? Good. Okay. Thank Great. you. Thank you, Mr. Krebs. Secondary principal report, Ms. Maxson. I have the rest of the children who are fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> and we had a wonderful opening day, but a, a wonderful opening week because until a high school runs its entire cycle of A, B, C, D, E days, you never know. Master schedule worked perfectly. Beautiful. Um, and I continue uh, to be absolutely amazed and, and thrilled with the behavior of junior and senior high kids in this community. It's just unless you've been someplace else, mm -hmm. yeah. you don't appreciate it's true. what it's like in a building where they all go where they're supposed to go at the time they're supposed to be there. Dr. Morgano happened to be looking at a 
piece of footage from one of, one of our cameras. It was the middle of a period. And if you're familiar with the second floor, it was a long shot of the, of the hallway. It wasn't one person in the hallway. That's something akin to a miracle. They just do that. There's never anything left on the floor after three kid, three periods and 250 kids eat lunch. And there's not one piece of graffiti. I just love them right to death. I really, really do. Um, we have, I'm not sure the count now, I believe we have somewhere in the neighborhood almost 20 kids that are participating in FOTEC this year, which we are thrilled about. And we have, we have five students who are selected for the New Visions program. Nice. And they are looking very tired, yeah. which is wonderful. And they love it. They don't like some of the yucky stuff, <laughs> uh, but they are loving the New Visions program. And it's a long day for them. Um, we're in the process of doing class officer elections and student government elections. Last Friday, um, PBIS uh, treated everybody to ice cream, which is great. All the athletic teams are practicing when they can. The athletic team practices were severely restricted last week because of the heat index. Once it gets over 96, <coughs> they can't practice. And if it's not hot, it's raining. But they're fine. And um, home game tomorrow night. I'm going to spend half the game on the Eldred side and the other half on the Tri-Valley side. <laughs> At least that's what my grandson told me. Um, Dr. Morgano and I met yesterday with the entire student body, two grade levels at a time, to, and gave them um, our new district code of conduct. We gave them the section that explains infractions and consequences, which they did not, which we did not put into <coughs> this student handbook because it's lengthy. But every one of them got a copy, had an opportunity to ask questions. We explained our new rules relative to hats and phones. And then Dr. Morgano talked to them about our new safety and security, um, our door alarms, which, it's a pleasure to say, have not gone off. Wow. So the kids are really understanding that, and it's terrific. And I'm glad, because when one of those alarms go, goes off, it's very, very noisy. Um, last night was a parent night for the Washington DC trip, which is for eighth graders, but we also are having, we asked ninth graders because they were unable to take the trip last year. Um, we don't know that count yet. And this evening, our, the parents of our seniors are meeting at the high school um, with Ms. Goran. And we have a representative there from Sullivan Community College who is the financial officer who is giving them the information on student loans and student financing. Um, I would ask the board if they could um, discuss um, our VOTEC attendance policy. Um, <clears throat> VOCES does not have for VOTEC an attendance policy. They do not set one. Each individual district can set their own. Elder does not have a policy and I think we should have one. My suggestion would be that <clears throat> more than 10 unexcused absences from VOTEC and the student would be withdrawn. 
because that is a huge portion mm -hmm. of the time that our future auto mechanics and welders and whatever are missing instruction. But obviously, it's for unexcused absences, just like we have in regular day school. And we are presently in the hiring process, just as Mr. Krebs is. Um, we are interviewing for a full-time special education position. Um, Mrs. Koenig, her last day with us is tomorrow, and then she's, uh, she's very torn, but she will be going to Fort Jervis. We also um, will do advertisement. In fact, it ran t this morning, today, Lisa, it was the first day, for a 29-hour per week clerical for the main office, which is half time. Um, Becky filled that position, and we lost her, but we lost her back to Mackenzie, so all is well. Um, Heather's doing it alone right now. And perhaps the board might consider, with the halftime position, um, perhaps making it a full-time position and splitting it with Mr. Russell's office who, since he has come on board as our fiscal officer, is doing unbelievably, an unbelievable amount of work up there by himself. He's lonely, I, you know. I mean, he's, he's out in the middle, in he's isolation out there. He only, pop, he only pops up for lunch. There is no one down there. I mean, it's terrible. It's terrible. Um, and our new student parking lot is working like a charm. <clears throat> and uh, we did change dismissal because the kids just said it made sense. So when we dismiss at 204, we let them go out three doors instead of one. If you let children make decisions, they sometimes make very good ones. Because we'd still be waiting for dismissal if we tried to do it. Obviously, arrival is different because, and that's working extremely well um, with unloading a bus as soon as it arrives. Faculty likes it that way. It just it doesn't bring everybody in all at the same time. Works better for breakfast. Uh, and we're well. Good. Very good. Is that the only position you're looking for, the uh, special no, we, ed and the We oh, have sir. the half-time clerical. Yeah. We have the full-time special ed. And because of changes internally, we will also need to uh, hire someone for ALC. Mm -hmm. Because... Is um, that usually a teacher? who picks up extra? We, <clears throat> teachers can do that if they wish on one of their preps. Um, that gets tricky when there's a sub in. Yeah. And what we try to do is make sure that ALC is covered by someone who has a, some kind of a license to teach mm -hmm. because Kids are not just in ALC because there's been a problem. We have kids who come in because they've been absent and need to make up homework. We have kids who are absent and need to make up tests and quizzes. So we need somebody in there. That Is that every period of the day? Yes. So it's a, essentially a full-time position? It, it is a full-time position. Um, and because of reduction in force. It was a full-timer there, right? Last year, um, again, it's affected by reduction in force because we don't have as many staff to assign a duty because that's what we used to do. And we also had Mr. Jasper, who was a half-time PE teacher, and the other half-time he was in ALC. But the person that started there this year 
is now over here, correct? Correct. And, and she was put there as a full timer this year. Yes. And um, right now we're handling it in the main office, and we haven't had many customers. But as bigger. the year progresses, we need it for a lot of different reasons. Um, so that job needs to be posted and filled also. So with her starting there this year as a full-timer? Yes. Coming over here as an aide? No, she's here. She was she's in my building as a TA, and she's here as a TA. As a TA. Right. In kindergarten? I, is it, is, yes, in kindergarten. kindergarten. I'm thinking this budgetary-wise. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's what I'm thinking about, is how we're going to, you know, we're going to hire somebody. So I'm just thinking, she come over here, we hire somebody in, you know, see over there for you, it shouldn't affect the budget that much, should it? Caleb? I'm sorry about that. <laughs> With her coming over if, here and hiring a person in ALC over there. Is a step one TA. I don't know what the salary is. Salary for step one TA is about 27000 And With fringe. With fringe benefits, it could go all the way up to $55,000. It really depends on benefits. Yeah, benefits. Because when we brought back pre K, we were talking about hiring aides and the aides salary was going to be covered by the grant money from Elaine Gunther. No, that was the salary from, it's the pre-K grant. Right, it's a pre-K grant. It's not Elaine Gunther. It's the safety. Oh, safety, oh, I'm sorry, yeah. We're talking about the pre-K grant. So with that money, we were going to be able to cover the aides. How is it going to work? Is it going to be a percentage of the aides that are going to be hired? Or is it going to be like a percentage of the aides that are going to be hired? Or is it going to be a percentage of the aides that one for over there, is that going to affect the budget? Yeah. If we do have additional policy, we'll we 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 hear more about it in, uh, in Dr. Morgana's report. So right. maybe reserve judgment right now. And, then and I think you have to weigh that. To provide the coverage. If you have to weigh that against faculty who in the past have been willing to take on what then becomes a seventh class for them. We pay them for that. And we pay them for that at whatever the rate is. And if, I did the math. And if you multiply that times nine, right. it comes out somewhere in the neighborhood of $400 a day. It's one sixth of their salary, so it's huge. Right. I mean, huge for the district to yes. multiply that by all the periods of the day. Every if day. asked, I don't think there would be a problem, but because faculty has picked up a lot of other uh, responsibilities very willingly, um, that's where we have the vacancy. And there are times of the year when it's busy. And that's why it's, we relocated it to where it is. And, um, why we need it. Do you have students in ALC all day? I'm sorry? Do you have students that spend time in ALC all day? If a student is placed on in-school suspension, as opposed to out-of-school suspension, because in-school suspension, we can provide them with their work every period. Yes. OK. OK. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you, Ms. Madison. Um, we will move on at this point to our superintendent's report, Dr. Morgano. As the two principals have said, <clears throat> we had a great opening of school. I have to thank the custodians for doing a fantastic job. This is the cleanest school district I've ever been in. The buildings are spectacularly uh, maintained. <clears throat> and that's no easy task. We had a power outage at the high school, and as Mrs. Maxson mentioned, our kids handled that perfectly well. In another school, there could have been kids making noise, running around. It was perfectly calm, and they sat in the dark for over an hour, and uh, they handled it very well. I'm having a high school gate put in by the student parking lot 
by the crosswalk. So when we have a, an event or a fire drill, we can close the road and maintain student safety. I'm asking for an additional uh, bus for the PM bus run. <coughs> the concept of the sports bus is to get kids closer to home so the parents don't have to drive as far to pick them up. But we have some kids walking three miles and that's just too far. Because you have to not envision it now, but envision it in the winter with the snow on both sides of the road and it's dark and we have a kid walking in the road. And I want to avoid that as much as possible. Uh, the student parking was moved to the lower lot. They all come in one door. Mrs. Max and I greet them all in the morning. And it, it's just a better way to do business. We need more spots and we're going to add some in back of the tennis court uh, for free. We're getting uh, blacktop that's been scraped off of roads. They're going to deliver it and put it there and we'll be able to have kids another seven spots there for them. I want to thank Kristen Smith for her lawn signs. I see one out in front of this building. Uh, some of you have picked them up and put them on the, uh, your lawns. Uh, we have goals, academic, fiscal, and building and grounds that the board received tonight. They'll review them and add to them or modify them however they choose, and then we'll share them with the public. We're developing a strategic plan for five years for academic, fiscal, and building and grounds. And when that's ready, that'll be made public. I'm asking for traffic signals to be installed at the high school and the elementary. The flashing lights that tell people to slow down. And JJ is, uh, JJ Gass is doing his administrative internship and I gave him that test. So he's working on that. Uh, people drive way too fast past both schools. And the flashing lights may help. I negotiated with the teaching or Teachers Association a flex schedule for a three-hour delay. Three-hour delays are no longer permitted by the State of the Department, but sometimes you need that to give the crews an extra hour to clean the roads. On those days, we'll stay an hour later and essentially making it a two-hour delay. And that is permitted. Monticello has been doing it for some time and was able to give me some advice on how to implement it. And other than that, that's my report. Any questions from the board? We're good. A lot of things are falling in place as the school year begins and some it's needs a, that we hadn't it's anticipated. It's a very smooth opening. Oh, I just need to mention, uh, we have a new website platform. We'll be uh, up on October 1st. And this is all work that Lisa's been doing. She didn't want to toot her own horn. Uh, board docs is scheduled to be up in November's meeting. That would mean no more paper at the meetings. We have Chromebooks and the, everything will be on uh, the mm. Chromebook. And we're working with Orange Elster Boses and writing two grants for record management. We have tons of records that need to be copied and uh, microfilmed or whatever, digitized and destroyed. And if we can do that with grants, that's a great way to do it. And they do all the work. They do all the work. I've seen well, them in action. Scott pulled some of the records down to Boses the other yeah, day. Yeah, we, we destroyed some. Mm -hmm. There is a shredding component also to the to the um, coaster, I think, that we're yes. a part of. Yes. Excellent. Anything else, this? Anything else from the board? Yes. Uh, you had mentioned that uh, Dr. Morgana was going to discuss the ALC coverage in his uh, report. Yeah, the, when I had a conversation with Bonnie, who's here tonight, uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's what happens when you're here. Uh, the teachers were going to pick up the ALC during their study hall periods. And that's that's not the best plan in the world, but it's the least expensive plan because there's no additional pay for that. We just don't have it in the budget now to pick up another person for that. And uh, I don't know what I was moving, moving Karen Tuso over to the preschool was a wise move for the preschool, but that lost us a kindergarten. Excuse me? Kindergarten. 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 That lost us a TA up here that could have covered ALC. So that's kind of where we're at and that's how it works and it would have worked 
relating to study halls, because we've already checked off one of our goals for the year, which was to reduce the number of study halls that kids had. Mm -hmm. And that was very tricky, given the fact that we also cut electives. Um, and we only are running on the master schedule now nine study halls a day, one in each period. And just because the master schedule is what it is, there happens to be three periods in the day where, in one case, there are already 16 kids in the study hall. So to have that person with 16 kids also be doing ALC is just not the way it's designed to be done. And eighth and ninth periods. And that was the plan for right. when we moved camp. And exactly. And it okay. so happens that eighth and ninth period, um, and that is music and back to back and whatever, we have on ACE or BDF, I'm not sure which, we have a study hall that's got 34 kids in it. 34? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you can't run a, yeah, ALC. Now we've split that study hall then you can. with two people. Mm -hmm. But again, the purpose of ALC mm -hmm. is not that. Because <clears throat> if I have a classified child mm -hmm. who needs questions read, answers recorded, because we don't yes. have resource rooms, right? Correct. Yeah. Well, we have them. We have resource rooms? We do for instruction. Yes, because okay. we have resources. But we don't now have an ALC room where we can do that. Um, and sometimes, if a teacher is, um, is giving a quiz, Four of those kids may, each one may need a separate place to take the test because they have different modifications. So well, I think the, uh, part of my special ed background, uh, my hackles rise because those children should be served in resource room. And I understand that resource room is instruction, right. but it's actually where they get their test modifications given, not ALC. So I, I hear what you're saying. We're obviously not going to hire anybody. Or right. try to spend any more money, but so this is a difficulty that we have to and figure out. And the majority out. of the time, always. Yes. The the resource room is has enough services, but it does occur sometimes. Right. I hear you. I hear and you. the first thing we do is meet the services. Sure. And we need another place which we're not going to get right now. <laughs> yeah. I hear what you're saying, and I do. No, I understand. Um, but the faculty will absolutely manage. We, um, I think we as a board are, are well aware of the tightness of the reduction in force. And hearing specifics is part of what I expected this year. Nobody um, thought it would just be excess people that we didn't need. No one thought that. Um, but we are um, we are inching along in, in at least a positive direction, Absolutely. and it is a hardship. I get that. But the fact that the faculty and I, and I think this is important. Just stepping with, up to the plate. With our AIS program, we have full implementation at the high school, full compliance in grades seven, eight, and nine. And that's without being able to, because of the embargo right. on the scores by the state, um, we appear to have guessed correctly on how to determine where those kids should be. And we'll wait, but it's correct Good. and that's a major step yeah it is an important important instruction okay any other questions for dr morgano anybody and then we come to uh the district treasurer's report mr russell get a microphone please 
Well, there are people in the back. You gotta raise your hand if you can't hear. I'm counting on you. Okay, so counting on you back there. I'm gonna start off talking about the real estate taxes. So what's going on with the real estate tax bills right now as of this moment is that I have received drafts of the tax bills on Tuesday. There's currently an issue with our vendor, and it's a, an issue that's mostly countywide. I mean, Sullivan West, Liberty, Livingston Manor, Roscoe, and Eldred have not sent their tax, tax bills out yet. Um, what had happened at the vendor, from what I'm told, is that uh, the previous person who was calculating the tax bills retired. They hired someone new this year. It wasn't working out, and he up and left suddenly in the middle of August, leaving the company that does our tax bills in the lurch and us as well as a result. So I have finally received the tax bills. Uh, I'm still working out a few kinks and they should be mailed out tomorrow. Um, as a result, I handed you guys a new tax work. It's my recommendation um, that we should extend the tax collection period. Uh, it has to be at least 30 days of no interest, so the tax warrant that I had prepared for you uh, starts tax collection tomorrow, which is when the bills will be sent out, and that's traditionally what we do. Uh, September 1st is usually the start of collection, and we don't usually actually mail them out until September 1st. Um, so that 30-day period ran on October 15th, so we give people an extra 14 days to pay interest free, considering they're going to get the tax bills about two weeks late. Um, I also wanted to discuss our current cash flow situation just to keep driving at the whole point. Uh, if you look at warrant number five, we're approving warrants number two through five. Five has maybe 10 checks on it. Uh, I've been holding just about every check that isn't necessary to go out. So our electric's going out, our gas, but not a whole lot besides that. Um, this real estate tax bill situation is not making the cash flow situation any better. No, I'm sure not. No, we did receive a $200,000 check from state aid and BOCES, who I would like to thank for this, um, sent us our BOCES aid check about two weeks earlier than they usually would, usually come at the end of September, and they fronted it to me this week because they understand our situation with cash flow. So that was a $244,000 check. Right now, our bank account is sitting in the $720,000 range, and we're sending about $300,000 out of that this week. So we're down to $400,000. So currently, we are not in a good situation cash flow wise. Um, and, and just to discuss about how long it's going to take us to get back on our feet, we, we made a lot of cuts. And we made a lot of changes, and we're uh, financially we're making steps in the right direction. But uh, it's going to take a couple years before we're fully back on our feet. Um, we currently have a negative unappropriated fund balance. Um, we should be getting the audit in the next few weeks, um, which we'll be able to discuss with the audit committee. But if we hit all of our targets this year, which it will be difficult to do, but we can we can put two to $300,000 back in that fund balance. Now, hopefully that would mean I won't be in this cash crunch next year, but not exactly. If we had an extra two or 300, that would still give me 700,000 in the bank, which for a school is not a whole heck of a lot of money. So it is going to take two to three years to, to crawl out of this, this situation that, that we've fallen into. So, um, you guys have any questions? So is that two to three years crawling out of it without popping a cap? Or would um, that be two to three years crawling out of it popping a cap one time? If we pop the cap, we might be able to crawl out two years. That is, that is if we do inflationary increases, but that also means that we cannot add any programs. It's inflation. If I raise taxes 2% but all of my expenses go up 2%, I'm in the same amount of buying power that I had before. So if I put 200000 in the bank this year at the end and my expenses go up 2%, my revenue goes up 2%, I can put 200 in the bank next year 
and that still only gives us a fund balance of 350, which means we're still we're still sparse on cash. And God forbid something happens really bad to one of the buildings or something like that. Yeah, absolutely. We would, we would probably, we would, not probably, we would almost certainly have to borrow with us. And that just goes deeper. May I ask that a question? Yes. I apologize. So a few years ago, um, the board had come to the public with a capital bond. Mm -hmm. And majority of that capital bond was for athletics and the fields and stuff like that. Is it now just as a, a taxpayer and being on the board, is it possible to try and do a different type of capital bond that would work on improvements to the buildings and such like that um, and approach the public with that? Not that I want the public to pay more in taxes or more or anything like that, but just as a possibility, because I know just from talking to people that are in my circle, they voted down the capital bond because it was so much based on the athletics and the athletic fields and stuff like that, not enough on the school itself. Would it be possible, would that be something that we could think about, is to go back and try and develop a capital bond project that would be more beneficial for the district? That is something that we've actually already had started discussing, but I wouldn't, uh, just my recommendation, I wouldn't go out for a new bond. What I would do is replace our existing debt. So, um, and this was actually, uh, I omitted this and I had to say, we had recently had our credit rating downgraded. We went from A to A minus with S and D. Um, one of the things that they put into their outlook was, and this is the truth, is that we, one of the positive things that they put in there um, was that we have rapidly depreciated debt. So our debt, advertising debt. So all of our debt would be off the books within seven years. Um, we have, I believe in the next year, a 700,000 bond that goes away. So that's a $35,000 a year payment. Um, we have a $10 million bond, which was originally used to um, do work on buildings. That, that one won't be coming out for quite a while. But my suggestion would be to maintain the budget. So as this debt expires, that would be when I would bring it. You want to talk about the impact on the 2%? Yes, uh, and then the impact on the 2% cap. So if we let all of the debt expire, you end up in a tricky financial situation. So especially with the bigger debt. So on the 700,000, it would hurt, but on the bigger ones, it would hurt particularly bad. When you take out capital project debt, uh, it affects your tax cap calculation. Now, as it expires, you, in a sense, pay it back. So what can happen is with larger debt payments, when they expire and don't replace them, you could end up with negative tax cap increases for a year. So the tax cap would be negative 2%. So you have to reduce it to account for the payments that you're not making any more on capital yeah. projects. Yeah. You get penalized for you get penalized yeah, for getting rid of your debt. debt. That's yes, the bottom that's line. That's and so you have that's a right. little bit less revenue to operate with, and then on top of which you're not getting any aid on that anymore. So you can now you're in a tricky situation. If you needed that money, you either have to lower taxes or you have to go to a contingency fund. Or you have to pop the cap. A 0% tax increase would be popping the cap in that situation. And we get nothing. 1% would be popping the cap. And we get yeah. nothing out of it. And you get it. So that puts you in a tricky situation if you don't replace your debt. I know it seems counterintuitive that they kind of encourage you to have some debt. Um, but that is a tricky situation for someone in our financial condition to be in, where we are saying, oh, well, we either have to reduce revenue or go to contingency budget, where which restricts our expenditures and keeps it zero, or pop the cap. So then Ms. Dutcher's idea of going out for a bond might be the kind of debt that we should incur. 
As the old debt expires, yes, you should replace it with capital projects. And yeah, in our condition, I would focus it more towards uh, the buildings, buildings, and other educational. We're going to need a new roof before we're out of the hole. Yeah, that's correct. So we have something and we'll replace what we have. Yeah, so that okay. it wouldn't affect the overall current budget. So if I had a $35,000 a year payment and that was going to expire, I would put it, replace it with a bond that would also cost $35,000 a year and we would use it for the two projects that we could use on. But you have to use that money. Absolutely. Yeah. So it doesn't help you reserve your fund balance. No. 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 Yeah. Yeah. It, keeps you, it keeps you from that tax cap going down on you. But it, it also doesn't take the money. I'm sorry? It helps you maintain your facilities. Right. It also but doesn't. But it doesn't get you out of the hole. No. no. That's the bottom line. It doesn't take any more. Any I understand that, but it also doesn't help us. Correct. It doesn't help us get where, it doesn't help us with the problem we're in right now. No, it's a neutral problem. But, but it doesn't make the problem worse. And right. actually better because we don't pay for a roof out of our right. very neutral right. funds. Right. So that's something we can. That's the positive outlook on it, but it still doesn't help the bottom line. Okay. Well, Caleb, thank you so much. Mm, any questions? Any more questions for Mr. Russell? I have to say thank you because every time I speak to Dr. Morgano, he tells me about another thing that he's had you look into. So he is keeping you busy, I'm sure. I get the impression that. You are quite busy. Yes, yes, he is. Yes, he is. He's very proud of this too. Oh yeah, I asked Caleb. To do, I asked Caleb to do that. I asked Caleb to do that. Like, and he does. I know he does. He's does pretty, a great job. Pretty spectacular. So I just want to make that public that I know that you are have picked up the slack for a lot of things that need to get done. So thank you from the board. And that is not to minimize what Lisa does behind the scenes, my dear, because I also know that she picks up a lot of things that we don't even notice mm -hmm. um, from our reduction in force. <laughs> and yes. you are highly, highly appreciated, Lisa. You're yes. welcome. Absolutely. And I am, uh, I am very pleased with the opening of school. I am extremely um, proud of this district, of these students, of this teaching force. I thought the MOA was amazing that we could come to a conclusion like that uh, to benefit uh, the school and, and, um, and the instructional process. And so thank you, everybody who was for that. Thank you to the staff, who is also, as you said, Ms. Maxson, um, stepping up. And I know that this is not an easy year for everybody, that you are doing more and, um, and possibly not being recognized for more. But I, I want you to know that we are recognizing this is a fantastic staff. And I've always known that, but maybe everybody hasn't. So I say it as often as I can. And I thank this staff for what it does because I've seen you in the classrooms and I've been around and I, I'm just amazed. And I keep hearing about wonderful graduates and what they're doing out there. And anybody that thinks we're not giving our students a great education are just don't know. They just don't know. Just look at our graduates, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So thank you very much. So the opening of school went well. Um, Dr. Morgano continues to work 22 and a half hours a week. A day. <laughs> a day. Uh, he takes a I don't think he sleeps. I don't know what he does. He's like, I get emails at 4.30 in the morning. He's usually here at 5.30. Yeah, that, yeah, and he's thinking before he gets here. You're not and supposed to think until both. you get here, you know? I'm a morning person. Oh, yeah, yeah. And the alarms go up because he can't remember the code. Huh? And the alarms go up because he can't remember the code to get in. <laughs> the code. Oh, you got to write it on your hand. Tattoo. Yeah, I didn't set the alarm. <laughs> well, that's good. I was worried about those alarms. I didn't believe they were going to work. I thought we'd be. That's working very, very well. I'm so, so very glad. Been great. I'm so, so glad. Um, okay, uh, we are up to uh, any questions for me? Anybody? 
I am not going to NISBA this year. I know I said I was going to go to the School Boards Association convention. Um, it happens to come at a time that I cannot attend. And um, so I don't think we will have a representative, and I usually represent both Eldred and Boses, and I will not be able to go. So that's, that's off the table. If anybody else wants to go to represent Eldred, speak up. It's not cheap, but it's worth it. It's when, very, when is it? Uh, October, late October, and it is uh, New York City. So if there's anybody that does want to go and represent Eldred, yeah. we are one of, one of the school districts in the whole state. We don't need representation, so to speak, okay. but if somebody wants to go, the, the, the sessions are amazing, <laughs> and you do learn a lot, and there's a lot about small schools. Um, I'm just not sure that that there's anything innovative that we can do right now. I think we're being pretty darn innovative <laughs> right where we are doing what we do at this point. So October 25th, Thursday. Okay. Thursday is the law conference and then Friday, Saturday, and everybody goes home on Saturday afternoon. Yeah. All right, we are up to public comment, limited to the consent agenda which is 5.01 through 8.04. If you have anything to say, please come up to the podium and identify yourself. Okay. No. Um, well, we're doing, we're doing, just ask a general question. Well, sure. The later one. Nice and loud. The hard work you guys are doing. Sean O'Connor, uh, Lynn Spade. Hi, Sean. You guys have pulled off some pretty great feats with the pre-K and the kindergarten combined and security to the buildings, all this stuff, uh, all, all appreciated. You haven't been hearing a lot of appreciation from some of the, this side. We appreciate it. Thank you. But with regard to the bond, how quickly can you guys borrow money rather than borrowing the money and doing certain things can you borrow money quickly in the event of an emergency? Is it, is it, I mean, or is it just so laborious that the emergency would occur and we would be, you know, having to go into the reserves and such? Can you, if an emergency occurred, quickly borrow? You can. Sort of be voted on and. You, you can, but for capital projects, it typically has to go through a, a public process. You can get things like revenue anticipation. Oh, okay. Then. Those aren't uh, issues really desirable. But if the roof failed catastrophically, we can get a quick one. Yes. We'd have to. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. And now, it seems to me, there, at least all from what I gather, there has been a little bit maybe, would you say, steeper decline in the student population. And unfortunately, it's, it's all, it, it, it's absorbed. We have 34 kindergartners. Okay, I, I, I'm glad. I'm glad it sounds. So we're here. growing it actually. Was, it was low, but it, it increased significantly as school opened. Mm -hmm. Well, we're at 499, right? We're at the last 50, meeting. So, so seventh grade. What are we at now? Five. Five eleven. So we're actually growing. That's good. And yeah. we were at last year actually. At there was a lot of dire predictions out there that have not come true. We have 42 seniors. Um, I, I, the exact number I can't tell you, but it, I would say it's somewhere um, like 170. We have 50 seventh graders this year. 50? Yes. Wow. Because they're affected the most by most of these cuts were 9 through 12, so I was really wondering what the 9 through 12 was. Well, in my eighth grade is, it, it's, no, you can get, no, no, I, I know, I'm do, doing it the other way. Um, I, I would say that we're somewhere in that neighborhood, but I don't know actually. I mean, I know we admitted four kids this week. Four kids. Does anybody know what the 912 numbers were last year? We can no, certainly get that information for you, okay? That's an interesting question, so. Let's sure. have that for the next meeting and no worries there. Absolutely. Okay. But that, okay. that working for the, the state aid and all of that is, is good news. Yes. And uh, the late bus for the athletes is a, is a great thing. 
But uh, the other thing, well, I think you're, you're telling me everything is still kind of tracking along, which is good. And uh, the tax, or you, the tax that you're generating this year, is conducive to like last year. You know, you, or you, do you see any problems with that? Will you know if there's some kind of change when you get all of this? Our taxes are always the whole, so we're we're collecting. Well, once the tax goes to us, uh, then we will start collecting. Um, we got a little bit of a bigger bump than an inflationary bump, which would be nice, but that only somewhat offsets the bus. So most of our savings came from cuts. In terms of revenue, it was an inflationary increase. Now, if you challenge the tax cap. I mean, I think this town would stand behind the school. I mean, no one wants to pay any more tax. But in the reality of, you know, not having to borrow more money and things to that effect, do you think challenging a tax cap right out sooner again than later and be able to, you know, affect more repairs and not have to make, you know, cuts and things to that I, I think I think what we're looking at doing is developing a budget both ways. And okay, looking uh, to see uh, what we could possibly do with it and without it. Because uh, I, for one, have history on this board, and so I'm a lot more hesitant to go for a busting of the tax cap than some of the other people are. That's not a problem. We need to discuss and agree or disagree. Um, we need to look at what would happen both ways. And yes, I believe uh, I, we've seen amazing response from this community this this past late spring and, and uh, before the vote and after. So I'm I'm thrilled with that. Um, whether it will translate to uh, support for busting the tax cap, I don't know. Um, but that's always a, a not that's not a given. We don't know that. We'll never know it for sure till it either happens or doesn't happen. Um, but I think we can look at it both ways and make an informed decision. And that's what we will be doing. And we will bring everything to you guys. Nobody wants to bust a tax cap. It's if, if it's a need to right. do it or not. But nobody sitting on his board here or anybody sitting here, I believe, wants to have to do that. Want is not the word we should be using. We may right. need to do it. And if it's a wise move for this district, then we will come to one kind of consensus or another and uh, go from there. But any other questions from the public or comments or? Are these based on a consent agenda? Yes. There's another commentary at the end. Nobody else? OK. We are going to go ahead then with, uh, I need a motion for the consent agenda. I'll make a motion. Thank you. I'll second. Thank you. Discussion from the board for the consent agenda. Questions of any sort? I, I have one question. Yeah. Um, so on 7.02, um, it says that uh, Ms. Moderano, well, she's not here anymore. Right. With the key elements, is there no longer the key elements? It's very much alive and well. Um, Mr. Krebs and I met today, today yeah. with <laughs> Um, our new music teacher, who is a very special woman, and Mr. Nivison, to plan out um, both key elements and how we will um, proceed with getting key elements started. And also, we went out as far as the elementary and junior senior high school musical. So, key elements. I would say within the next seven days, there will be announcements made to the students, seven through 12, uh, for a meeting of all students who are interested in belonging to key elements. And we'll get that information also to parents, it'll be on the website. And after that is done, all of those students will receive information that at that meeting relative to the audition process and what will be expected um, for membership in key elements. Excellent. Thank you. 
Hopefully by the next board meeting, you'll be appointing some members that are filling those positions. Dr. McGano, 7.13, that approval for that stipend is to save that grant, correct? Yeah. yeah the grant of about a hundred and how much? Excuse me? The grant is about how much? 160,000. Yeah. For record keeping and stuff like that, correct? Right. Well, because you not only have to write the grant, which is, yeah. uh, you, you're pulling threads from all over the district to identify <coughs> what can come under Title I, but then you have to report oh, out yeah. to the state on a regular basis, right. and the compliance is very strict. I used to write that grant myself, and um, it, it's a bit of work. And Joanne, Caleb, is here tonight. Joanne, where are you? <laughs> Thank you for taking that on. We certainly appreciate that. <laughs> Perfect. Mm -hmm. Anything like that can, that can be taken off Dr. Morgano's broad shoulders is necessary at this point. So this is good. Any other can any other parts of consent agenda that you want to discuss? Okay, then I'm calling for a vote. Ms. Kuhn? Yes. Ms. Dutcher? Yes. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. LaQuit? Yes. And I will vote yes. Thank you, everybody. Congratulations so, yeah. to our... Yes, congratulations to anybody who is here. <laughs> Belinda's here. Yeah. Yeah, very good. And um, we are all the way down to... Let me see here. What are we down to? 805. Is there an 805? No, there's not an 805. Okay, so we have the MOAs out of the way. Everything's out of the way, right? Okay. So we are up to old business board. Do we have any old business? Are we still trying to set dates for workshop? Any more workshops? Um, we have not discussed uh, any dates for workshops because there are so many goals here yeah. in this packet mm -hmm. that have kind of gone ahead without us. I think that we are um, well charged to try to learn these and support these. Um, I'm not sure that we need board goals beyond we will support these. We have a mission statement that we never finalized in the last round that you and I might remember. Yeah. Um, what does the board think? Do we need to gather in a workshop format to clarify our particular <coughs> goals outside of these district goals or do we not because that's what we originally were going to do you know is, is gather and finish the mission statement and the, and the goals for the board I'm not sure that they would be beyond the supporting this so these have gone ahead well, I think one, one of the goals for the board should probably be that when we can, I mean, I know we all have, you know, day jobs and stuff, but to be more involved in this going on in the school, like I personally would love to be in, uh, invited to an event that maybe a classroom is having or, you know, I mean, I know I get the PTA and everything like that, but if you have a class that's doing some kind of a project or anything like that I would love to come see that like just to be there as you know as a community member but also as a board member kind of like a liaison kind of thing between it if you're doing a special anything any like science experiments or something I mean you know just something that you would like a board member to be there for I think that would be wonderful for our, our faces and you know to know that we're with you guys so I mean I'm definitely putting that out there I would love to be invited and both principals just heard you. <laughs> I, would love that was I know that I know that both I was in both schools today. Yeah? Very cool. And I'll be here Wednesday. Um, some of the money that we raised for pre K um, yes. I sat down with Miss Martell and Miss Lombardi and they would wanted to spend some money on a T shirt for each of the kids. So we special we ordered them in the sizes of the kids. So mm -hmm. next Wednesday Mr. Krebs, I'll be in your building next Wednesday uh, to deliver the t-shirts for the pre-K kids. Very cute. Yeah. Very good. I take pictures of that one. I got to see that. Yeah. That's great. Adorable little ones. All right. Um, so uh, do we need to formally go look at the workshop? I think, workshop we, should, or I think we, we should look at these 
and then maybe come back the next meeting and decide. Okay. Because it's pretty good. I mean, it's a pretty good plan for the goals here. Right. That's so right. Let's take a look at these, see what we and, think, and we need and to. And when you look at them, then keep in mind, is there anything that the board needs to write down to do? What? Mr. Russell. Yes, Mr. Russell. Um, just for new business, uh, if you would wanted to, because the tax bills had been out, uh, yes. it wasn't on the consent agenda oh, the walk to extend the budget period. Oh, okay. So we have a walk-on motion. Oh, that's right. We did have a walk-on motion. <laughs> All right. You so have to read that whole thing. Do I have to read this whole thing? Yeah. Caleb will read it. <laughs> Does that have to be read? Yeah. All right. How about if I just start with ten? Oh, really? <coughs> Say what? <coughs> Walk-on motions have to be read. I don't mind. I will start with ten point oh one. Um, so I would like a motion that gives approval upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools that the Board of Education approve a collection of school taxes pursuant to New York State Real Estate Property Tax Law number 1326A over the amount of $50 in three installments. The first installment, at least 50% of the taxes due, shall be paid no later than October 15th, 2018, pursuant to New York State Real Property Tax Law 1322-1. And provided the first installment has been paid, the second installment shall be 25% of the taxes due plus interest at the rate determined pursuant to New York State Property Tax Law 1924A, due no later than October 31st, 2018. And provided the first and second installments have been paid, the third installment shall be the remainder plus interest at the rate determined pursuant to New York State Real Property Law 1924A, due no later than November 3rd, the expiration of the tax warrant. I need a motion? I make a motion. I need a second. second. Discussion? Voting, Ms. Dutcher? I'm sorry, Ms. Skewn? Yes. Ms. Dutcher? Yes. Mr. Yes. Yes, I'm sorry. Mr. Halleck? Mr. LaPlante, I'm not used to calling you yes. Mr. and Mrs. I well, don't call me Mr. Call me Scott. It's that simple. It sounds so good, though, doesn't it? Okay. <laughs> and Ms. LaPlante, and so I say yes. yes as well. So 10 01. Does the whole thing have to be read? <laughs> That's what I asked. For 10 02? Nobody was saying. She says yes. <laughs> Approval upon the recommendation of the soup. This is 10 02. Approval upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools of the following motion concerning the tax warrant for the 2018-2019 fiscal year. Whereas, Chapter 73 of the Laws of 1977, amended Section 1318, Subdivision 1 of the Real Property Tax Law, and be it resolved as follows, to the collector of Elder Center School District, towns of Highland, Lumberland, Tustin, County of Sullivan, New York State, and town of Deer Park, County of Orange, New York State, you are hereby commanded, one, to give notice and start collection on September 14th in accordance with the provisions of Section 1322 of the Real Property Tax Law, to give notice the tax collection will end on November 3rd at 12 o'clock midnight, to collect taxes in the total sum of $10,429,024.00. In the same manner that collectors are authorized to collect town and county taxes in accordance with the provisions of Section 1318 of the Real Property Tax Law. <clears throat> $10,429,023 school, including STAR, and then $14,790 for the public library. To make no changes or alterations in the tax warrant or the tax rolls, but shall return the same to the Board of Education. The Board may recall its warrant and tax rolls for correction of errors or omissions in accordance with the provisions of Section 1316 of the Real Property Tax Law. Number five, to forward by mail to each owner of the real property listed on the tax rolls within 10 days after the start of the collection of a statement of taxes due on his or her property on tax bill forms provided by the school district in accordance with the provisions of section 922 of the real property tax law to forward by mail without in interest penalties to the office of the county treasurer a detailed tax bill of all state land parcels liable for taxes on the school tax rolls in accordance with provision of section 504 and 544 of the real property tax law number six 
to receive from each of the taxable corporations and natural persons the sums listed on the attached tax rolls without interest penalties when such sums are paid before the end of the first month of the tax collection period to add 2% interest penalties to all taxes collected during the second month of the tax collection to account for such sums as income due to the school district. Number seven, to issue receipts only on forms provided by the school district in acknowledgement of receipt of payments of taxes and to retain, preserve, and file exact copies of all such receipts issued as required by section 987 of the real property tax law. Number eight, to promptly return the warrant at its expiration and if any taxes on the attached tax rolls shall be unpaid at that time, deliver an accounting thereof on form showing by town the total assessed valuation tax rate, the total tax levy, the total amounts remaining uncollected as required by section 1330 of the real property tax law. The warrant is issued pursuant to sections 910, 912, and 914 of the real property tax law and is delivered in accordance with sections 1306 and 1318 of the law. It is effective immediately after it's properly signed by a majority of the Board of Education. The warrant shall expire on the date above unless other, a renewal or extension has been endorsed on the face of this warrant in writing in accordance with section 1318, subdivision two of the real property tax law. The warrant is given under our hand this 13th day of September, 2018. I'll make that motion. Thank you. And I need a second. All right, voting. Dis discussion? Want to discuss that? Okay. Uh, Ms. Kuhn? Yes. Ms. Yes. Dutcher? Ms. Tehal? Yes. Mr. LaPutte? Yes. And I will vote yes. Thank you. Now, is there any other walk on motions? Because I'm not reading anymore. Somebody else has to now. My tongue is tired. Now we got to sign it. One to sign, yes. Oh, this is that. All right. Yes, we can do it as we go along here. All right. So, we have anything more on old business or new business at this point? Nothing. Okay. Well, that is pretty awesome. We are up to public comment. Yes. I've asked this question uh, previously, so I want to get it on the record that I'm asking it again. Uh, for the number of students by the way, um, during last year or this year, when I asked it a month ago, um, I was told logically wait until the school year starts. But we, we're in the school year now, so um, I'm kind of baffled as to why it should take another month to get this information. So uh, I like to uh, know when I, when I can receive this. Um, and specifically, you're asking for the number of students? The number of students by grade uh -huh. came through last year to this last year? Last year and this year. Okay. And if you want to uh, increase it through the date of the report, um, you can ask for a student, it would be fine. What report? Uh, I'm assuming that I'm going to get this in. Oh, I see. Okay, that, uh -huh. yes. Uh, so that there would be possibly three columns, but I, I, this is my third request for this information. Uh, well, the question is, uh, following up on last month's uh, discussion about the uh, pre-K funding, back, I, Caleb, I think it was, it might have even been your first meeting, somebody in the um, public mentioned that uh, the $60,000 for um, pre-K reimbursement was for a half year, or half day. Um, is that true? Yes. Okay, so are we going for half day reimbursement this year or, or full? Um, How it works is we get, when we first applied for the pre grant, we were approved for half day, half day program. Mm -hmm. And that's what they would allow us to do on their funding. If we did a full day program, that was on us. Mm -hmm. Now, we've tried in the past, and I didn't do it this year, but we've tried in the past to get that increase. They won't, they won't do it. So what they say is, you get a half-day program, you can run a full-day program if you like. And in fact, they even base our reimbursement on full-day program. They give you the numbers every year that say, 
been two classes. It would have broken into two. Okay. If it, if it had been 29, would it have been one, one teacher and an eighth or two, one teacher? No, the, I think there's always one teacher. Let me get to my point. Yes. Um, I believe what was said last month was that the, the uh, program was going to be covered by the, the grant because we were hiring uh, three eighths. But I believe it's being funded by or being staffed by four aides and two teachers. Am I we, correct? We had one aide hired already. That's why we were hiring three more. Okay. It was always going to be four for the two classes. We have three aides and one teaching assistant. It was going to be four aides, but we moved three to TA down. Teaching assistant. Okay. So yeah, so my answer when I entered at the last meeting was based on uh, the budget. So in other words, I have already budgeted budgeted into the budget that was passed one eight. Because I, I was under the assumption that we were going to need one teacher and one eight. So the three additional days were not budgeted for, but would cost about the same amount as this pre-K grant. And then we found out that we were going to need a second teacher anyway. So we have two teachers and four aides. Okay. Three aides and one teaching assistant. Three aides, one teaching assistant. In that response, am I correct in that now our expense is additional aids that the actual expense went for the teacher. The grant budget well, the grant one, budgeted budgeted one teacher and one aid. And then the grant can cover that additional teacher. So now the additional three aids are at the expense of the district? You can look at it that way. But we were looking at it that it was covering the three aids because even if we didn't do the pre-K program, we, we needed to have a second teacher. And the, none of the laid off teachers for um, one that position, is that correct? There was one that was asked and she's the only one left on the list and she declined. So, getting back to the, the uh, money, um, is there any way that uh, that reimbursement will ever be more than the 62,000? <laughs> no. 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 The state says what you got is what you get no, and that's fact, what you always will get. In the Bryant School District where I work, we made a clerical, the business office made a clerical error and reported fewer kids and they reduced our grant in half and we couldn't get it back. So once the once it goes down, you made, can't get it back. It's, it's so if we didn't do a pre-K program this year, we would have lost the grant and would not have it in the future. Ever. Ever. We wouldn't get it back. Okay. Right. Uh, moving on, how many tax bills are sent? try to do half a year at each building but we've changed that up because we wanted to be air-conditioned when we needed to be 
So that was in the library at the high school, the only option. So we moved over here instead of, we were looking at the music room as a possibility, but it would disturb Mr. Nivison's setup so much that then he wouldn't be able to get ready in the morning the way. We didn't want to do that to him. So we moved it over here because we didn't need AC tonight. No after school activities on those things. I'm sorry? There'll be no after school activities on a three hour delay day. Okay. Um, does it create any problems for parents who, again, correct me if I'm wrong, but don't, doesn't somebody have to be at a child's house for the school bus to let them off? The elementary, yeah. At the elementary. Um, does that create a problem for, for some parents? It may create an inconvenience. I'm sorry. It might create an inconvenience for some. So I'm just delay. wondering whether it's the alternative is to not have school at all that day. Well, that's actually actually what I'm getting at. Um, like I know you run into issues with scheduling, but um, well, one are, of the, the, are the students' needs really served by only a half day of school? Well, it's better than no day. But if you if you had more less holidays and, and you could add days off um, if if necessary. I just, you know, how you work in a, uh, an office, could you sustain your, your uh, regular activities only working half a day? You know, no. Continually? So I'm just, I'm just wondering why that, that logic doesn't follow through into this. this uh, because we have to, uh, we have a limit by the state or a requirement by the state to meet a certain amount of days. That's exactly my point. And so hmm. we. Now it's by hours. Now it's by hours. Now it's by hours and not days anymore. So by doing this, we're able to meet the state's hours. And teachers, we have a few of them here, uh, teachers adjust to two hour delays and three hour days. They have a schedule, they know what's coming. They know it's a 20 minute class or a 30 minute class instead of what's normal, 40, 40 minute class, right? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, Josh. Yes. So as teacher, when those three hour delays this year, Yes. Right. So if you have a truncated, you move 12 minutes per class, but then yeah. you can fix your lesson in like 12 minutes, not seeing them as much worse. Is much worse. So 12 minutes is the impact per class, um, and that's not as bad as not seeing them. And it's particularly important to high school courses that have labs. Labs. Because they must sit for. 30, I think. 30 They're required to, in order to take the regions. In order to sit for the regions, they must have that last time. And they have to sign on. And as we feed them. That they have met the lab time, and the science department has to verify before those students sit that they've done the lab time. And let's not forget that we feed them when they come in, and often. If we don't have school at all, they don't have the same opportunity for breakfast and lunch. Yeah, my point, just to go back to it, is uh, maybe the problem isn't um, the number of days off. It's, it's that um, a lot of days off during the school year are built into it. That maybe rather than putting those days in ahead of time, maybe add them as you don't need them. And a lot of holidays are based by the state, where we have to take based by the state, like right. banks are off based by those kind of holidays. And we have to have our days done by a certain day. We have For to have regions. our hours in by a certain no, day. And there's also a contract with the teachers that um, they have a certain amount of responsibility, but not over and above. So we can't necessarily play with the schedule that much. That's a little more difficult for parents than anything else. We have nine snow days in the calendar. We've already used one at the high school. we the power being out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we didn't get in enough hours that day. Right. I just want to say again, that if you're working in an environment where you, you cannot sustain half days of work, 
and, and well, it, it works in the school. It does work, yes. Um, okay, moving on. Um, the status of the state funds for the days off last year, um, have we gotten any resolution on that? Uh, it's been applied for. I, I haven't heard of it. Give it to us. We've applied, and Dr. DeFore wrote a letter to the commission on our behalf. Do they have a time period that they have to respond? <laughs> They never have a time period that they have to respond by. I can tell you that the state aid goes, so you get your first visit to state aid in October. Um, but this is the answer everybody wants to hear. But I don't think um, it should be a problem. No, it shouldn't. But it, uh, it could go as late as December 15th, and it could be as early as October 15th. But I know. I'm pretty sure they are telling me from October to December. But December 15th is when all finals and provisions are done, and it's that they're stating right here. Last question. Um, has there been any analysis of the payback period on the um, uh, early retirement for the, the retirement incentives that were paid out? They haven't been paid out yet. Well, when they are. Uh, <laughs> nice to <looking. laughs> <laughs> Question. Can I check the answer? Uh, you know what? I would actually like to do a five-year analysis of it because I think that's fair. I think yeah. that's what you should do. The cost is over those five years for. Um, yeah, I can do that. Can we get a from the board that will that will be reporting on? When Caleb can do it, right? No, not when, but that will be reported. Oh, it will. We have we are committed to transparency. There's nothing that we're not going to share, good or well, bad. Ask the question, so I don't we'll have it by well, the next meeting. By when? We'll have it by the next board meeting okay. at the latest. Thank you. So says Dr. Morgano. So it's going to happen. Yes. Good morning, Wade, um, as long as the state is <coughs> pre-K, I think that's one little uh, problem with that having it. Uh, personally, I'm not happy to pre-K. I think parents should teach their kids how to tie their shoes and count and wipe their nose. Uh, I view it as paid, paid care. But we have it, so we want to say, oh well and good. Um, I know I had a half day of kindergarten. Probably most people up there had a half day at most. Probably no one had pre K. And you're all reasonably successful. And, you know, in some cases, very successful. So, I, I question the validity of it. I would rather have the emphasis of our education where it really counts, and that's first grade and full grade. Recently, I had an opportunity to speak with a recent grad, a valedictorian, and I asked the person, how well did you do in school? This person's going to a very premier college. And the first year was difficult. Second year was better. Um, but, you know, I want to have positive results for our students. And we need to put our money where it's most effective. Pre-K really isn't it. It's really at the higher levels where it matters. And not necessarily in sports, and I'm pleased that sports are important to me, but not the expense of quality education. So I hope the board has that emphasis as well. well thank I you. would invite you, and you could come as my guest and visit the preschool class. I think you'll see uh, kids learning and doing things that they would otherwise not have an opportunity to do. It's, it's fine to say that um, parents should, but we have a different world right now, and almost all schools are um, picking up the slack when two busy parents are working. Whether parents should or shouldn't is not our issue. What we do is take children where they're at and get them to where they need to be, and we find that we do that better if we start them at four than if we start them at five. So, the, and, and there's plenty of documentation to both sides. You can always argue what you've just said. You can always find people who will agree and disagree. I'm personally glad that we have preschool, and I see it as a benefit. But I understand what you're saying, and I appreciate that. And 
you know, anybody else that wants to speak to the issue is fine, but um, I am glad that we have preschool. Well, and all I know that in the field of physical education, kids are fatter and slower than they ever were. And in the area of education, again, I haven't taken a study myself, but scores are not as high as they were 20, 30, 40 years ago. So that's telling me that early education is not really helping. Well, if, if you knew how different the tests were then than they are now, they are so different that there would be no comparison. Are you saying they're harder now? I'm saying that they are changed. I, harder or not harder, uh, the, even the curriculum that we teach is a totally different curriculum. So there is no measure, it's apples and oranges, what kids used to do compared to what they do now, what scores were. An A a long time ago was based on a different test than an A is based on now. And, and that goes through all grade levels and that goes through all, what we teach now is not what we taught. There is not a body of knowledge to be consumed and finished. There is, no, there is no end to our learning. And now what we teach children is how to access learning, how to find the information they need, how to use the information they don't have. It's an internet world, whether we like it or not, and our entire curriculum is different. So you cannot compare what kids used to do to what kids do now. There is Especially just no. History is history, geometry is geometry, no difference. Well, I, I did go to pre-K and a full day kindergarten. And as a person who does have a documented learning uh, disability, pre-K was a, a blessing in what I learned. Seeing my daughter go through pre-K where she had speech issues um, and she needed a lot of that hands-on, and I'm a teacher and I did what I could, but what she got from pre-K was more than what I could do. So that was a benefit for her as well. Uh, if your daughter is special ed, that's one thing would be done. Okay? But, but it's not just her. Okay. Yeah, well, it's other people too. Yeah. Yeah, 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 we're done. Sorry. We're done with She's the discussion. I, I appreciate your input. I appreciate your perspective. Everybody heard it, and they can make up their own minds, as we always do around here. So thank you, Mr. Wade. Thank you. Um, anything, anything else from anybody? Yes. Hi, Anna. Hi. Um, I'm just here to talk about in reference to the new code of conduct that was handed out I think Tuesday um, uh, meeting. Um, I read, I read it, I read through all the and all the consequences and all the whatever. And there was, I think, at least two or three references to the question of loss of senior loans privilege. And I just wanted to ask what that is because there's never been a privilege of having lunch. I eat lunch in the cafeteria with all of my classmates in 11th grade and 12th grade. There's nothing different about it. Um, I don't know what that means. Maybe we'll have an explanation. Loss of senior lunch privilege? You're asking the wrong person because I was here for six months and to my knowledge, I have no idea what senior lunch oh, privilege is. And, and you do, and you don't. It's an error. I think it's a mistake. However, you're quite right, Pam. There you are. And I'm not aware of the privilege that I apparently have. Right, but you're missing. <laughs> and we should have told you, right? Um, of course. As far as I know. Okay. Um, at least in the meeting, there was. Uh, Implication of a loss of future other loss of other future uh, senior privileges. Um, I just wanted to know what those were. In the experience I had here last year, up until April, um, we had, I think, three, where we were at a certain point, and part of. And all of that is what helped to drive creating a program of here's the infraction, here's the consequence, where there were three seniors because of <coughs> behavior issues who were told that unless occurred, there was the possibility of not going on the senior class trip. 
Now, I can't speak to, I know what occurred while I was here as it, relate, as it related to some of those students getting it back. After April, I don't know. But that would be the only thing that you do as far as a trip is concerned. Yeah, so other things, Hannah, would be like the prom, possibly, if the punishment meted that, driving privileges, being able to drive to school, certain things like that are more for seniors. Well, I guess it would be then maybe not called senior privileges, but upper upper level, upper grade privileges that would be lost. Fair enough. Also, in the code of conduct, I just found another error. Um, there was a mention of the dress code, and the dress code, it says the dress code will be as states, there's a colon, and then there is nothing under it. Good question. I don't know if we ever came to any conclusion about the dress code. Thank you for these, um, and I think that what we can do is ask you to continue to find our mistakes and uh, so that we can clarify as we go on, because this is a new... I know sleeveless was an issue, and we resolved it. It was in the middle of the heat wave um, relating to <coughs> our young women, and that it was fine to have sleeveless whatever. Oh, yeah, actually, I was just uh, right. that the did not get or Well, it obviously wasn't proved enough. And I think if you look in the, um, in your student handbook, where you see dress code, it's correct there, I believe. But I don't have it in front of me. Yeah, I appreciate that, yes. If you have something you can drop off at my office, I'd appreciate it. No, those are just all the things that I've found so far. There's probably more. Thank you. Look. Yes, there probably are. Any other comments? Um, yes. Yes. I have a follow-up um, with um, Mrs. Dutcher about inviting everyone in. Um, if you'll notice at the end of the Mackenzie driveway, there's a little sample cord. So um, Sheridan and I were in charge of PBIS, and we're really trying to just the community aware of things that are going on. Um, so just for example, tomorrow's Scott Day, we really try to just let everyone know. So anything that's up there. What kind of day? Oh, dot day. Yes. Dot, dot mm. day. No. So anything that's on there, but we'll pass it along. You know, anything that anyone's doing, get you guys in there. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for that open invitation. Yes. Is it that they um, divided it into two because there's so many kids in study hall? No. The master schedule drives what we do. And one of the goals, at least that was being formulated when I left, was that we try to reduce the number of kids that have to be scheduled for study hall. And that we get more kids into more classes. With reduction in force, that's tricky because the additional classes normally will be generated by electives. And because, again, I can't speak for the last two months, but it makes perfect sense to me. Um, we were able to reduce the number of study halls which means we have reduced the number of kids that are in study halls. So you're telling me there's only one study hall per, per First period, we run, there's a study hall. I can't tell you who has it. There's many study halls, from my impression, from students. There's nine. There's nine, apparently. There's nine. But and then one per period. One per period. There's only one per period. There's not two study halls in the same period. Not to my knowledge. If it has been changed through the guidance office, um, I have not yet been made aware of it. But we do have a significant issue one of those periods, and we split it. 
So two study hall, there's theoretically, there's two places the study hall is running on opposite because days. The class is so large. That's what I was asking for. Correct. Question. Yes. Okay. That's, that's on that I'm day. That's what I was getting. Right. You're so going to have a study hall that is so large that it's actually two. Thirty-four is too many. Is no way for any kids to be able to do anything that makes sense because it's just too many kids. So fortunately the schedule works so that um, the bio lab, Tom is able to pick up the study hall every other day against his bio lab. Okay, thank you. And I will seek a motion to I'll adjourn. Motion. I'll second. All in favor of adjourning? Aye. 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 Thank you, everybody. Thank you. The water bottle is sweating like crazy. I know. I saw that. Oh, I saw that. I did it when I was bored. I'm happy. Oh, thank you. Well, it just means when board meeting is over, that's what I did. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh.